I guess that everybody's fascinated by origins. How did something come to exist that wasn't there before? And there are really three great origin mysteries in my life. One is the origin of the universe itself, the other is the origin of life, and the third is the origin of consciousness. The problem about the origin of life is that even the simplest living thing is so stupendously complex that it couldn't possibly have arisen in one amazing gigantic chemical reaction. There must have been a long and complicated sequence of steps from some sort of non-living mix of chemicals to the simplest living thing. Uh, we don't know what that was because it's probably long since disappeared. So this is a really tough problem because it happened a long time ago. Uh, curiously, Darwin uh, wouldn't be drawn on how life itself began. Uh, Darwin gave us a theory of how life has evolved, but the origin of life, he felt, lay outside the scope of science. Uh, and it, I have to say, uh, still largely lies outside the scope of science. We're still very much in guesswork territory. But in recent years, I've become obsessed with trying to understand how life came to exist from non-life. Uh, because to a physicist, which is what I am by training, life looks nothing short of magic. It looks like some sort of magic matter. Of course, it's not magic. Uh, it is perfectly ordinary matter doing extraordinary things. And what I'd like to understand is the transition from the non-living to the living. When did these extraordinary things first come into existence? And how did they come into existence? And so, for me, I find this a really tantalizing thing because life is so stupendous, it's so wonderful that I would really like to know how such a marvelous thing should come into existence. But in particular, what I'd like to know uh, is not so much all the little details, but whether this is a very likely event or a very unlikely event. Now, I suspect that the, the answer to that is going to be a long time coming, and that I won't know uh, within my lifetime, and about the only way that could I, I could ever get the answer to that really tough question uh, would be to somehow travel into the future, maybe a thousand years ahead, uh, by which time perhaps they have it all figured out. And so I'd love to be able to do that. And of course, we know that such a thing is not impossible. We know that the laws of physics do permit travel into the future. They may permit travel into the past. So we've known for over a hundred years since Einstein told us uh, that time is elastic. It can uh, be stretched or shrunk according to the way you're moving and according to uh, your gravitational circumstances. So time runs a little bit faster up on the roof than it does down in the basement because gravity is a little bit weaker up there than it is down here. Uh, and likewise, uh, if you get in a plane and uh, fly off to some city and then return, uh, there's a measurable discrepancy between time in the plane and time on the ground. But it is only a matter of money and engineering. The principle of being able to slow time by motion is absolutely well established. Well, Paul, my dear fellow, you were right about one thing, time travel is possible. I've just come back from the year 3000, and have I got news for you. So back in the 21st century, you were obsessed with the idea that the universe began with a Big Bang and then people didn't quite know how it was going to end, whether it would end with a crunch or a whimper. And what I can tell you is that for the origin of the universe and the origin of life, uh, you had it totally and completely wrong. In fact, everybody did back in the 21st century. And instead of thinking in terms of space and time and matter, uh, one, one should really think in terms of layer upon layer of complexity uh, with the laws of the universe emerging in some way in which these different layers amalgamate together. Now, to explain this properly to you, I'd need to go through pages and pages of mathematics, and we simply don't have time for that. Just remains for me to say uh, goodbye, and I'll see you some century soon. Bye. Catch up with you later.